Welcome money makers. In this video, I'll be pulling back the curtains to reveal some of the most useful and powerful techniques that I use when creating a YouTube video. And so that you understand, this is no BS. Here on my channel, you can see that over the course of one year, I've posted only 13 long form videos, which has gained me over 17,000 of you wonderful subscribers. Thank you, by the way, all the support you've given through the inspirational comments and simply watching my videos has been invaluable. So yeah, it has been a real grind for me, taking me almost eight months to get monetized and meet the 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours requirements. And mind you, this is in my spare time as I run a custom woodworking business and a renovation remodeling business. And the point of me saying all this is obviously we all want to make some money online. And the revenue generated from this channel now covers my rent. And I don't say all this to toot my own horn, but to give you inspiration, I believe anybody can do this. When I started a year ago, I had absolutely no experience working from a computer, no editing skills, no Photoshop skills, no copyright skills, nothing. I'm completely self-taught and I run this as a solo operation. And don't worry, I'm not gonna bore you with niche research and setting up your channel, etc. Instead, I'll be diving into some more advanced techniques like generating endless video ideas and titles, writing excellent scripts. I'll also cover some video editing tips. And as a bonus, I'll be teaching you how I create this unique avatar of myself that you are watching now. Also, if you follow the link tree link in the description of this video, you'll be led to a free downloadable PDF guide with all the tools used linked and the entire process written out for you so you can easily follow along with this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. Now there are lots of research tools you can use to help you at this stage like TubeBuddy, Ahrefs, and even Google Trends. But I primarily rely on vidIQ and their Chrome extension. Our goal in the beginning of this process is to find outlier video ideas. These are videos that are performing exceptionally well in comparison to others in our niche. You'll find that these videos have a low competition, high potential keywords associated with them. These are the hidden gems that we're after and here's how you can find them. So the first thing I'll do is set my browser to incognito so that my YouTube data doesn't interfere with this process. And as you can see here that I have the vidIQ Chrome extension installed already. So I'll go to YouTube and type into the search bar something directly related to my niche, for instance, making money with AI. And as you can see here, the vidIQ extension will give you an overall score with lots of useful stats. Here's the search volume as well as the competition volume. Then it shows all these stats here. This includes the top channels using these keywords and the top related keyword opportunities. And looking at these scores on the side, it looks like changing the first word to make instead of making gives a better score. So I'll copy this, paste it into the search bar and search to see what we get. Now as you scroll through these results, you want to start paying attention to this outlier score. This score represents how much better this video is doing compared to the channel's average. The other important things to note are the subscriber count, you want this to be relatively low, then finally the total views compared to how long the video has been published. So now you would just go ahead and scroll through these looking for videos similar to something you'd like to create. And this is where things get interesting. Once you find a channel that has a relatively low subscriber count with a new outlier video that's doing exceptionally well, then you're ready to implement my first AI hack. This will allow you to create endless video ideas. So watch this. Let's head to ChatGPT and use the first prompt that is written out for you in the guide that I mentioned earlier. With this prompt, GPT will then ask you to provide it with a list to proceed. So now you wanna head back to YouTube, then go to this creator's channel, go to their videos, then highlight and copy a bunch of these videos straight from the page like this. Then head back to GPT, provide this as your list and proceed. And just like that, the bot not only organizes this information, but it also gives a detailed analysis of the top performing videos the title structure and themes, the correlation between video length and performance, the patterns in the top performing titles, and best of all, it will suggest 15 new video topic ideas with their scores attached. And you can see here the scoring criteria used. And if you take a close look at all 15 of these titles are really good and I have yet to find a better method for generating video ideas and titles. Seriously, not even vidIQ's title generator, which incorporates the knowledge of my entire channel, comes close to the output I get from this prompt method. 
So now let's hop back into YouTube, find another channel with an outlier video and repeat the process to show you how quick and easy it is to generate yourself a massive backlog of video ideas that you can know from data will be successful. Alright, so I'm liking this video here. It has a decent outlier score of 4.6 and it's doing well with 33,000 views in one month. So I'll click on Max's channel here, then go to the videos tab, then I also like to sort by most popular, which will bring the best performing videos to the top of the page. Then again, you can go ahead and highlight a bunch of these video titles, right click and copy straight off the page. And then back in the same chat with ChatGPT, you can go ahead and paste this new data here and hit enter, no command necessary. And there you go, GPT will incorporate this into the existing data set and perform its analysis. As you can see, from the 44 titles input, it breaks out the top three most viewed videos. It also analyzes the title structure and themes, the correlation between the video length and performance, the patterns in the top performing titles, and finally, what you're really after, it gives you 15 new video titles. And at this point, after you've done this for a couple of channels and GPT has some data, you can use this prompt here to get endless video titles that will score at least an 8 out of 10. Alright, so now that we have a nice backlog of video ideas and titles, we're ready to jump into video production. In this section, I'll cover another powerful prompting method that will help you in generating some really high quality scripts for your videos. So going back to my title ideas, let's say I want to create this video. Simply copy this title straight from here, head back over to YouTube, paste it in the search bar and search. Then you would walk through here, finding the highest performing videos from these suggestions using this outlier score. And I would even consider at this point watching through a couple of these videos at high speed, deciding for yourself what you might want to include in your video, and at the same time, looking for ways to improve on these videos, adding value for your viewers. And at this point, you have a couple of options for generating your script. You can take the lazy way, which would entail copying this video's entire transcript and using youtubetranscript.com, then feeding this script to chat GPT, followed by this prompt, which can definitely produce a great starting point. Or you could take the more advanced route, again using the entire transcript from the video, only this time prompting GPT to give you a detailed outline of the script. Then taking this outline to wherever you'd like to write, Google Docs, or in my case, Canva Docs. From here you can easily rearrange, expand, and make what changes necessary to make this video your own. This way will allow you to infuse your own unique voice and give you full creative control over the final product. So yeah, using an outline like this is a great way to overcome any writer's block. And remember, this should only serve as a starting point. Your actual script should incorporate your original ideas and vision. Alright, so now that we have our script, let's move on to recording our voiceover. Now I've gone ahead and purchased a nice microphone and learned how to use equalizers, compression, and more to try to produce the highest quality voice recording for you. But I started off just by using my phone and running the recording from that through Adobe Enhanced Speech, which is free. Now I do believe a real voice recording is extremely important, especially on a faceless channel like mine. But if for whatever reason you need to use an AI voiceover, I've left three free options for you to check out in the guide that I mentioned earlier. And I'm going to basically skim over the rest of this section because it would actually take an entire video to demonstrate all that I do to prepare my voice recordings. Basically, I start in Audacity, then I finish in DaVinci Resolve using their equalizer and compression tools. Alright, so with your voice over, ready to go. Now we can jump into the editing process. Now I'm going to assume that you have some basic knowledge of using video editing software like CapCut and DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to gloss over the fundamentals like using your timeline, making cuts to your footage, adjusting timing, adding transitions, etc. And instead, I'm going to concentrate on some more advanced editing techniques like keyframing and creating custom animations. And finally, I'm going to reveal how I've created this unique avatar of myself. And yes, this is actually my face and my voice. And I know you're probably eager to see this process, so let me walk you through how to get this done. It all begins with an AI generated image from DALI 3. You can access DALI with ChatGPT's paid version or Bing's image creator by Microsoft. So here in Bing, you can see some of the results I've achieved and their corresponding prompts. So now I'll download one of these and take it to Face Swapper AI. Once signed up here, you'll get 10 free generations per day. And if you need more credits, their basic plan is only $7 a month. Their interface here is super simple. You can just go up to the More Swapper Tools tab here and select the Face Swap tool. 
Then here, you'll download your face, as well as the image from Dali. Then just click Swap Face and wait for the AI to work its magic. And there you go. These results are of course not perfect, but they're the best that I've achieved with free software. And I actually take this process a step farther, importing this image into CapCut and using their AI-powered tools to manipulate and enhance this image, making it look as close to my original photo as possible. Let me show you what I mean. Here in CapCut's desktop version, I've created a new project and imported my original photo for reference, as well as the image generated in FaceSwapper AI. So I'll just pop these onto the timeline here, and now you'll be able to simply hover over your clips to quickly compare. And now check this out. With my clip selected, I'll go to the Retouch tool here. Then select Retouch, and this will open up all these options for you. From this first set of tools, I like to use the Bright Eye tool, cranking this up to about 70, and then I might use the Dark Circles just a bit, as well as the Brightening feature. And then if you continue to scroll down, you have the Auto Reshape tool. Select this, and you have a bunch of controls here that you can play around with. So I'll start making adjustments here, comparing to my original photo, until I'm happy. And if you're still not happy with the results these tools give, then you do have the manual option here. This tool will allow you to kind of push and pull the image as you like. Just click where you want to move, drag, and release. And let's say you've overdone it a bit here and foobarred your face all up. You can always go down to the little circle icon here and reset your work. So after some time making adjustments here using the nose, mouth, and eyebrow tools, as well as the manual adjustment, this is my final product. Then once you're happy with your adjustments, you can simply export this as a still frame by going to the three little bars here in the display window and selecting export still frames. Now, if you don't have a pro account, some of these features won't be available to you. But if you download CapCut's desktop version with the link in the description, you'll get seven days of their pro features for free. So at this point, my avatar is looking pretty good, but we still need to do a couple more things like fixing the text on his hat and getting him set into a better background. To get this done, I'll be using Canva. Here, I'll start with a blank YouTube thumbnail template. Then after uploading my image and popping him onto the page here, the first thing I actually want to do is use Canva's Magic Expand tool. So with Freeform selected, I'll drag the corners of my image out just a little bit. This is mainly just to fix the top of my hat here where it's cut off. So I'll click Expand, then choose the best from these results. Next, I want to fix the text on the hat here. So I'll go back to Edit Image, and this time use the Grab Text tool. Once the tool highlights the text, you can select it and click grab. And there we go. You can now work with this text however you like. And I also want to get rid of this money bag. So going back to edit image, this time I'll use the magic eraser tool. The brush tool selected, I will simply brush over the money bag, then click erase. And as you can see, Canva's magic tools are extremely powerful. And now I have a clean black hat to work with. And yes, these tools are only usable if you're a paid subscriber to Canva Pro. But no worries, if you use the link in the description, you can get your first month of Canva Pro for free. So now let's get the background situated. First, I'll go back to Edit Image, and this time use the Background Remover tool. And I'm going to go ahead and add a new page, and then drop my original image here. This time, I'm going to use Canva's Magic Grab tool, which will separate me from the background. And I just want to use the background, so I'll delete my guy here. Then go ahead and stretch this background to fit the entire page. And there's a couple of spots that need fixing. So again, I'll go back to edit image and again use the magic erase tool to get rid of these. Now I'll go to my avatar, right click and copy the image, then paste it onto this new page. And oops, I forgot to bring the text with me. So I'll grab that and drag it down. And there we go. After getting my text in place, we're almost done. The last thing I'm going to do is add a glow effect from under shadows. After making some minor adjustments, my avatar is ready. So let me go ahead and download this. Then we can jump into the next app called Dup Dub. You can get started here for free, but be mindful there's no commercial license. Here on Dup Dub AI, I'll be using the AI avatar tool, which is their lip syncing tool. The first thing I'll do here is upload my image. And they have options here to record yourself, use an AI voiceover, or upload a recording. So I'll go ahead and upload my recording from CapCut. Then give it a little preview to make sure this is the right one. And this is good, so I'll go ahead and generate talking avatar. This seven second clip took about two minutes to finish processing, so let's have a look. Welcome money makers. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can create some really clean and professional animated videos like these. So as you can see, these generations aren't perfect. The teeth are a little funny and the text on the hat is morphing around a bit. But all in all, I'm satisfied with the output. And there you go. Now you know how I create my talking avatar.
All right, let's take this clip back to CapCut so I can show you a couple slightly more advanced editing techniques. Let's start with combining keyframes with animations. So I've got my guy in the timeline here, but he's looking pretty stiff and I want to give him some motion. So the first thing I would do is add an animation in. There are tons of animations to choose from here, but I'm going to keep it simple and use this unfold. Then to change how long the animation takes, you can adjust the duration with the little arrows or the slider here. Now going back to the video tab under basic, I'm going to set a keyframe where the animation ends by clicking this little diamond icon to add keyframe. Then to give my guy a slight zoom in over the entire duration of the clip, I'll move my cursor to the end. Then adjust the scale with the slider here, and then the position by clicking on the screen and dragging to where I like. And because we set one keyframe earlier in the clip, these adjustments will automatically set keyframes. Now if I scrub over the timeline, you can see that we have a nice slow zoom in effect over the entire clip. Let's say you want to start this zoom a little bit sooner to keep the motion flowing. You can just click on the keyframe itself and drag to where you like. I think this looks a little better, and now I want to add an animation out. So with my clip selected, I'll go back to animation, then click out, and choose from here. And these also can double as transitions. As you can see, this will work well as a swoosh to the left. If you found some value in this video, please give it a like, and let me know in the comments what was most useful for you. Also, if there's anything you would like me to elaborate on or create a new video about, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, stay safe, and be blessed.